Hi everyone, my name is Tom Willman, physical therapist from Apex Orthopedic Rehabilitation. Today we're in High Mountains uh, Preserve right now in North Jersey, and we're going to talk about hiking and also how we can get into hiking with meniscal tears or maybe some arthritis in our knees or hips, just to make it a little bit more comfortable and a little bit safer. <laughs> So if we're talking about meniscal tears, the meniscus is basically a type of cartilage called fiber cartilage. It's a piece of cartilage. When we're talking about the knee, that basically is almost in between the two bones, the tibia and the femur, and you also have the kneecap and patella. In between those two bones, it's a layer there, and it provides shock absorption, and actually it provides a little bit of stability to the knee. Today we're gonna to talk about how to use uh, some hiking sticks, how to kind of fit them a little bit. And often, basically what we were trying to do is offload some pressure on our knees. It makes it a little safer when we're kind of navigating some of these, some of this terrain. In some respects, it's a little easier sometimes than being on asphalt or cement, depending on the type of terrain you're in. But these poles, we're gonna show you a little demo on how to set them up and the proper uh, setup. And then a couple things as far as equipment so you don't slip and slide as much um, in terrain like this. If you're not really sure if you have a meniscal tear, you've just been having a, you know, a lot of knee pain and such, uh, we're gonna give you a couple quick things. One thing uh, with a meniscus tear, oftentimes, you can have some swelling and all that. And you can notice, let's say at my knee right here, I have, I have a couple old injuries here. Uh, you may notice that you can't see the patella as much. It's a little swollen. It's a little hard to bend because of the increased pressure and, and volume inside the knee. A lot of times, uh, most of our tears are on the inside of the knee. They're called the medial meniscus. And there's two meniscus. There's lateral meniscus and medial meniscus, and they rest on the top of the tibia. So any kind of swelling or discomfort right along the joint line may be an indication that you got a little tear. And this might be good if you've never actually gone hiking to start with these, just to kind of get started and you know take a little pressure off those structures. But that's commonly where you'll see some of the problems, even if you haven't been diagnosed. You can also, depending on the age of the individual, like I'm over 50, over 50 uh, group may have also some arthritic changes and a meniscal tear. Both of those, those structures provide some shock absorption and are sensitive to any kind of weight bearing, whether it be standing, walking, or otherwise. What I always like to kind of start as a starting point um, is to basically find out how, how much, how far can you walk comfortably? There's a lot of apps that'll tell you how many steps or what kind of distance you're doing. Strava is one, there's other apps out there. Just to find out how far you can walk comfortably. And that's kind of your baseline. And if you're in a neighborhood that's reasonably flat or a little hilly, you kind of keep that in mind when you, when you do that. And I use it the two to one rule. So if you can do two miles of walking and that's your limit, let's say in the community or around town on asphalt or cement, it's probably you can do the equivalent of one mile with a little variation in different uh, types of terrain like this where it's a little rocky, you gotta be a little more careful, and it's a little bit different as far as the demand. So if you use the two to one rule, it's a good starting point um, as far as where, where to go and what to get into first. There's a lot of apps there that you can tell you as far as different hiking trails and the distance, and it'll also rate beginner, intermediate, or expert as far as the intensity. It's a very severe uphills, and you gotta find one that's a really kind of flat rolling hill type thing and also whether it's technical, very rocky or very flat. You'll see certain indications like it's a fire trail or it's a walking path or as compared to rocky or more, uh, more demanding type terrain. So before we talk about the walking sticks, I'm just gonna talk about a little bit about footwear. Um, there's a lot of great people, a lot of great manufacturers as far as different types of uh, uh, shoes, especially if you have any kind of weakness in your ankles, something that's a little high up on the sides here, has a decent tread and has a little bit of uh, stiffness side to side like this so you you have a little bit more stability when you're on this uneven terrain so the starting point is getting a, a good pair here using a kind of a running shoe or cross trainer is a little bit better but it'll tend to slide especially if you're in muddy terrain but this is a good starting point for kind of dry conditions um, not too cold or anything like that not icy if you get into more uh, serious conditions um, where you're out especially in the winter time now we're starting to get into periods where things are icing up a little bit there's something you can use that'll prevent you from sliding. We don't need to slide, with, especially if you've got some knee issues already, um, a thing called micro spikes. And I'm just gonna show you one. These are elastic here. And there's a range of sizes you can, um, you can use. Uh, that you can use to, you know, they're, they're, there's not just one size, you kind of have a range. Okay, if I can ever get this apart here. So these are micro spikes. Um, this provide a little bit of traction. You see these little spikes here. Um, you're gonna, we're gonna place it right on the shoe. You can put on a variety of shoes. Um, essentially, you take it over the tip of the shoe. You can do it even before you, even when you get to the mountain. And you can carry these, and if you need them, you have them in your backpack. You can slide them back, just back like this. And 
you can see it provides a little bit of traction right here. This is actually great if you're walking around the neighborhood even and you have some icy conditions you're worried about when you're taking the dog out even for a brief one. It'll prevent that slide. You can see those good traction points. And they still, they're they pretty resilient. I mean, you can go up a pretty a decent grade here. And if you feel like you don't need it anymore, you can kind of take them off, all right? But they're called micro spikes. It's just one of the manufacturers. Um, and there's other types out there that are just as good. They're a great little option here. If you're in uh, conditions that are a little bit... Uh, more intense and you have some snow you can use these simple uh, this is the brand is a msk here um uh, what was it uh, snowshoes here and these are great they're pretty simple and they're pretty light okay that's a great thing too if you have especially if you're dealing with like first time going out these are light this is for like hard pack or you know any kind of snow depth right here you can pop these on i'm not going to demonstrate these but they go on pretty simple and all that um there's another option as far as getting out there in the woods um you can do it around town too like i said it's got these spikes here and it actually has a little you know you can put your foot in here and essentially Articulate you can see that little grab right there So if you're going up any kind of incline in the area you can get up a little safer So those are two options just to make you safer the micro spikes You can use just around town and things like that if it's a little icy or hard pack We still want you to have a fall So those are just kind of footwear obviously any kind of shoe like that There's a lot of a lot of uh, manufacturers. We'll put them in the description of places you can go between REI or Campmore They have some great people as far as fitting some good shoes and hiking shoes and also they also also often carry um, the micro spikes or uh, snowshoes. Okay, like any new piece of equipment, we first we have to make sure is we're, we're getting fitted correctly. If you're in normal conditions like this where you're not dealing with snow, the basic rule of thumb is if you look from a side view, you want to have a 90 degree angle from your here, from, from your forearm to your upper arm, okay? And your hands like so. Um, that's, that's the perfect one. Now, if you're dealing with snow conditions, you may have to adjust these to a little, maybe a little shorter, depending on the snow. Like sometimes you're in a path and you need to make these a little shorter because you're, you're hitting the snow higher and you're in the path. So you've got to make these, and these are great. These are adjustable um, ones where you can kind of telescope it in and out. Also, I like the adjustable ones, just as a side note, I like to have these so I can pack it up, lock it, and put it in my backpack if I don't really need to use them, okay? But for the sake of this, um, that's the general measurement as far as um, how you want to have this set up. Um, you have some straps here. A lot of them have different straps. And there's different varieties. This just happened to be the one I have here. Um, certain ones um, uh, have spring-loaded. They're meant for more shock absorption. Um, these straps right here are great because it'll take a little pressure off your hand. You lock the strap in and place it down so you can kind of lean into it and not have to rely just on your grasp. Okay, now realize this is a new piece of equipment. You've never used it before. A lot of times I have to tell people, try and go out in the neighborhood just to using them so they get used to, you know, just like a simple walking stick. Some people will use a single stick and they just don't like having both, you know, you know, having their hands on two pieces of equipment. So just go with a single stick and that provides enough support. Um, but I do suggest going in the neighborhood. I may feel a little awkward, but just to kind of see how your shoulders, neck, back, you know, how they tolerate it. Um, I especially like if you have any kind of neck or shoulder problems, you have a little lighter pair. Um, they range a little bit as far as um, type pair. And this is not a replacement for like an assistive device or cane, but they can be pretty good. If you do take them out, um, you know, in the neighborhood, uh, there's different attachments you can kind of, like, this is, this is a pretty solid attachment. This is meant to be on kind of dirt and gravel. Um, you want to get like a little blunt end. They have these little things that'll come to it that'll make it better for like an asphalt type surface so you don't slide with these. Because if you do this, you can really slide. So just keep that in mind. Um, but definitely, um, you want to make sure it's fitted right so you don't develop any kind of neck or back problems. But with that, by, by using these and, and putting some pressure through them, it will take some pressure off your knees and also give you a little stability that you may not have. If you have meniscal tears or arthritis, um, especially the meniscal tears, if you have any kind of rotation and twisting, we're trying to prevent that. That's what you'll find with meniscal tears is just a lot of standing, a lot of standing, a lot of walking, but especially twisting is probably the last thing like, you know, that's the kind of thing that can really, um, really cause some problems for your knees. So we want to really limit that when we're out in your environment like this. Okay, so there's a couple different things to consider, especially if you have adjustable, the adjustable uh, portion of this. You have your set adjustment, which is meant for more flat ground. But if you're going to go uh, on a steep incline, you can make these a little shorter on the fly, you know, while you're there. Um, if you're going up, especially a very steep incline, you'll make these a little shorter. So I think I'm, I have these set. Uh, let's say 120. I'm going to make them 115 centimeters here. Doesn't really mean I'm just trying to give you a number. Um, 
So we pop these in here. And you want a little shorter so you're not reaching up too high as you're trying to make that ascend. So I'm shortening these so we're a little bit more of an even surface as we're going up. Okay? So that just makes it a little easier. If they're too extended and high, it makes it a little awkward, okay? This is obviously not a really steep incline, but you get the idea that as you get steeper and you're coming up, it makes it a little easier as far as placing it, okay? So the opposite is true. If you're going down a steep decline, and it's not especially hard, if you've had any kind of knee issues or if after surgery or such or meniscal or arthritic knees, going down is really hard. Like going down stairs is really difficult. So we'll actually do the opposite if we have We'll try and lengthen these a little longer so I can get a little bit more than 125 centimeters on this. I'm going to make this a little longer. So as we're going down, we're not reaching too far forward and all that because these are going to be a little longer than the typical setting. And you can do that if you're going down, you know, like a long decline. Short declines is not as much, but a, 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 long, a long decline is great. Just make them a little longer as you're going down, about 5 to 10 centimeters. Um, another situation, if you're running down, we're actually on a slight hill where this is the high side of the hill on this side, this is the low side. Some people, I, I don't generally do it, but we'll make one side a little bit shorter, like that. On the uphill side, and this is considered the downhill side, will be a little longer. So you kind of have that change, so they're actually uneven lengths. It's a little strategy of kind of using this and getting a little bit more comfortable. But short, choppy steps, just like if you're an athlete, you know, just for stability until you're sure you're comfortable with them. And it really allows you to kind of take some pressure off your knees and feel a little safer, especially if you're carrying a backpack and you have a little extra weight, like a water bottle or, you know, a change of clothes or something like that. Hopefully you don't get thrown into the water or anything like that. Um, you know, that can actually help you out as well. So, you know, this will kind of take some pressure off that increased pressure or weight of, the, of a backpack. So get into those woods, um, just get the equipment set up. There's a lot of great providers. We're going to put all the names of the local providers in North Jersey that you can access for getting some uh, walking sticks, also some online providers as well, um, and also the uh, micro spikes and the snowshoes. And, you know, really get, get out and enjoy. It's great getting into the woods. You don't have to deal with cars and getting run over, <laughs> people distracted driving. So it would be great to get out there. I hope you, you enjoy it, and hopefully it will be a little more comfortable for your knees. Um, in our next video, um, we're going to go over um, a, a nice little strengthening and flexibility program for people that are just starting hiking and want to get a little strength before they get in the woods. It's a great way to get in there and make that progression a little easier. Hope it helps that out. Have a great day.